Okay, uh, I'm Manuel Soares, uh, winemaker from Evleda Winery. So my occupation is uh, making making wine, all wines from the our uh, company. Uh, our company produces uh, red wine from Douro and uh, white wines from the Vinhover regions, mainly. Okay, um, and if. Nobody have my introduction, so I'll just do it right now. So, hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. As you can see, we are uh, have already started uh, with our uh, next Skype video wine tasting, virtual wine tasting. And uh, as you just heard, we have uh, Manuel here from Avalida. Uh, is it Avalida? Avalida. Avalida. And uh, we are going to uh, be trying the Sharamba. Uh, wine here. So, uh, so you just uh, introduce yourself. So, tell us a little bit about uh, the winery itself. Give us a little history, a little background of it. Uh, about Sharamba or about the, the how company? About, how about uh, Avaleda first, and then we'll then we'll go into Sharamba. Okay, okay. Avaleda, uh, it's a family company. It's a, um, a long, long story with uh, farmers in the um, in the Vinhover region near Oporto, and um, and the uh, 18th century and 19th, 19th century was a traditional farmers produced uh, different uh, cultures: maize, potatoes, fruits, uh, citrus, etc. And uh, after uh, 19, 1935, uh, start producing only the the grapes and the, and the wine, uh, and so um, the company um, are um, increase a lot the the, the sales and the, the grape production and wine production. And now we are the bigger company from the Vinhover region and uh, one of the bigger company in the wine industry from Portugal. Okay. Um, and then uh, you've got uh, this particular wine and uh, this is from the Douro. Uh, yes. So let's talk about this and the inspiration behind, behind the name and, and, and the wine itself. So the... Um, the Sharamba uh, Douro, uh, Avleda start produced the Sharamba Douro at 1992. Okay. Uh, why? We are a big, big company in the white wines uh, production. We are bigger, bigger from the Vinhover region, mainly, mainly white wines. So we have a big, um, a big. Um, power in the export market. So, and we think that make a, a red wine we, with our style, uh, fruity and um, very popular wines, mainly focus in the international market can be a, a great option. So, of let us uh, decide, was decided to produce the red wine from the Dole region with a um, with a good result, and um, I think that is a um, um, is a, a great a great option, sincerely. Okay, and uh, it uses what four, it uses four different varietals. These are traditional port varietals. Is that right? Yes, yes. The grapes that we use in the in the Charamba are mainly uh, Toriga Nacional, Toriga Franca. Tinta Roriz and Tinta Barroca. So the same grapes that is used in the Oporto wine production. Okay. Uh, do you have, do you know how much uh, of each varietal, each, each grape is used in here and for this vintage? So the, 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 the grapes come from the whole vineyards. 
uh, with a mix with the grapes, not it's not uh, easy to give you the percentage, the right percentage. Okay. But we we know that the principal grapes varieties used in this wine is Tinta Roriz and uh, Toriga Franca. Okay. All right. Um, so the the area that the um, that the grapes are coming from is there anything special about these vineyards? Um, anything about the the terroir or or maybe the the climate itself? Yes, yes, okay. Um, the Douro region, it's a, a valley, a Douro valley, and the vineyards is uh, produced in the terras, terras, different terras. Okay. And um, the um, age with the vineyards, it's a um, minimum 20 years because the, the vineyards in the Douro are very, very old. So, the climate is um, a dry and warm climate in the summer, and cool and very cool and uh, and dry also in the in the winter. We we say that uh, that is a Mediterranean climate. Okay. So the soils that uh, at the door region, it's a schistous soils. It's, re it's a very good because retain retain the water in the sum in the dry summer. Okay, so, so um, uh, soils are really good there. And before we were, uh, before we started recording, we were starting to talk about the vintage. You said that uh, 2007 was really good. Uh, can you explain a little more to everyone watching what was so great about the vintage? Yes. So, so in the in the Mediterranean, Mediterranean uh, regions, is the um, is very influenced by the the summer. The, the the step when the the fruit is ripe or ripening uh, and if um, is um, not too much warm and not too much dry the um, the the vine don't stop the um, produce the sugars and produce the flavors so we can we can produce if the the vintage is good we can produce more fruit flavors and more uh, deep color, more soft tannins, not too much alcoholic um, wines, and uh, not flat without acidity. So the the importance in the um, in the 07 vintage was that the the soils have a good stock with the water, and uh, and consequently give the um, the water. That the um, vine have a uh, need to to produce the sugars and produce the flavors, and um, during the summer, if don't don't um, don't uh, have too much wind from the east, east, and if not uh, warm, the um, the vine don't stop and can uh, can produce uh, slowly the sugar and flavors, and without lose acidity. Okay. More okay. well balanced wines, consequently. All right. And then we were talking about um, that this was uh, a declared vintage for port. Yes. yes, at Porto was declared vintage, so it, that gave the indication that it was a great vintage. So that that usually, if, it, if the port is going to be declared vintage, then that normally translates into uh, yes. the table wines being being also uh, really yes. good. Yes. Yes, because the grape, the gra because the grapes are the same, because the vineyards can can be the same. Why some gra uh, grape growers produce uh, Oporto and others produce uh, the red wine from Douro? Depends because the law don't permit that the, all grapes go to Oporto wine. Mm -hmm. It's a, a, a one percentage with a uh, grapes produced in the whole region go. Don't go to pr produce a port wine and produce red wines from the Dover. Okay. So I think that is a, a great option. All right, cool. All right, well let's um, let's go ahead and get into the wine. Um, we got uh, you guys sent me two bottles, which is great. We didn't, we haven't drank any of the. Uh, I haven't had any of this yet, so the uh, second yes. bottle is going to be awesome to, uh, to just kind of enjoy. And uh, so this is a 2007. Uh, just for everyone uh, out there, uh, just get a little bit closer on the uh, label there. Yes. For everyone to see. And uh, 
here in uh, here where I live in Texas um, at our our main supermarket, uh, the information I got is this is a nine dollar retail wine. So uh, this is perfect for our show. This is uh, the the value type wine that uh, we do a lot, and I am really excited to uh, check it out. So let's uh, let's go and see what the bouquet is like. I'm getting uh, more of the darker red fruits. Yes, uh, I feel the um, grapefruit, some some mint flavors, uh, spicy flavors, mm -hmm. and the uh, licorice, licorice flavors also. Yeah, the, I, do, yeah I definitely get that mint. Yes, uh, the the mint and uh, comes from the tinta roris. Okay, do you know the the grape variety? Have the same is also produced in the Spain with the name uh, uh, Tempranillo. Tempranillo. Okay. So they have the same profile in the. I did a little research before we started because I wanted because I didn't I wasn't familiar with all the varietals, and uh, so it wasn't like I just just happened to know it was Tempranillo also, but yes. Uh, I definitely like that you know and so you get you get in the red fruits. The mint, and then you know, because of the mint, and and maybe I maybe it's just my my brain is, I'm just wanting to uh, put it in there, but I kind of get that um, that the type of chocolate with mint in it. Yes. Uh, just feeling, you know, I don't really smell the chocolate, but I guess it's the mint that would be in the chocolate. That makes sense. All right, let's uh, let's taste this because I'm already intrigued. Mm. This is really good. I like this. Um, I got a little bit of um, a little bit of bitterness, but but not in a bad way, you know. Um, I get kind of like um, there's a little bit of dustiness to it. Yes, yeah, so we can we can feel in the in the mouth. We can feel some 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 hot flavors, hot sensation from the the door, the dry dryness from the door, like the the like the region. We can if you know the the door region, we can feel the. The region in the in the um, in the wines because they are similar. This final of the of the door wines more. Yeah, I get a bit of like um, like 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 bitter root, like like yes, craziness, little dust, like but like having that that like the like having just roots, a little bit of that that type of bitterness to it. Um, yeah, similar to like having. Bitters, or, or um, um, like some of the uh, some of the root-based liqueurs from Italy, you'll have you'll have this this type of mouthfeel and this type of, of flavor. Um, very interesting. And then there's well, I, I really like that part. I mean, this is intriguing to me having that 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 different. Um, Dustiness, bitterness, a little bit, but it's it's not like it's it's not it's not like your your um rustic, rustic. Yeah. yeah yes. yes. I, I think this is, this I, is a style I really like. I, I think that this um, this style of wine, this kind of wine, it's a um, very consensual wines, not not so powerful, not uh, deep wine but it's a, um, a good expression with the, with the flavors and the, in the mouth it's a soft tannins and um, a good uh, good final sensations 
Right. Yeah. The, the, the tannins aren't overpowering I me. Mean, you can you can te definitely tell there's a little bit of dryness. Um, yes. But it's not it's not uh, it's not overpowering. Uh, yeah. It's not like you know your mouth is puckering up from from the tannins um, and all that. Uh, you have on the tasting notes we have um, for pairing for food pairings uh, barbecue game lamb. Um, I I could easily see. Uh, doing this with with barbecue um yeah i think that the the um, big quality this wine is a um, a very uh, very consensual wine uh, i can say that is um can we can drink with a, a barbecue grilled meat uh, and also and um also in the in the dish is not so intensive mm -hmm. you mean and and tasting some more i mean even um even like lighter like lighter meats like lamb actually makes me want to have lamb right now you know I, I know this is a little bit suggestive right there but i mean i i don't really ever think of of wine um uh, what wines that would pair with lamb yes but i could see doing this this is uh i really like this um I would say if, you know, as far as the people that watch the show, um, if you find this uh, out in your uh, out in your market, especially if you're in the San Antonio or Texas area, um, yes. definitely buy it. Uh, nine bucks. It's a great value. Yeah, so the Portuguese wines mainly, the, you know, Portugal is not, not the wine country too much famous. So right. if you are in the market in the different country like the United States for us is completely different it's uh, so far away and um, with these conditions we we can present a good value wines if you want to have a success in the United States market you we want to be a very good quality uh, with a good price you got, uh, make a, a, a great values wine. If not, you can choose, uh, the American consumer can choose uh, Spanish wines, more famous, more known by, by the consumer, or French or Italian, do you know? Right. Portugal is, uh, is not known by the red wine producer, and it's only, unfortunately for us, known by the Oporto wine or, or Vinho Verde wine. So, Shiramba, we need have uh, we need have a good good price uh, with a great quality. I think. I agree. This is um, this is excellent. I really like it a lot. Um, how with uh, in Europe, how much um, is there is there more popularity with Portuguese wines in Europe? Um, is it because it's more like it's it's more, I guess, local in the sense that people people know it better. Yes. Uh, so, at, in in the Europe market, Portugal is more known by the the wine production, but but Vinho do, uh, or Porto wine is uh, the most famous. Mm -hmm. It's always the most famous in the world. The Vinho Verde is also very famous, uh, but the most important now is the, that the wine re, do, the Douro region start to be uh, famous and start to have uh, uh, small small growers grape growers or small wineries like a boutique wineries and uh, they make a very 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 great wines wonderful wines can say and so they have a good uh, good notes in the different uh, magazines and um, increase the the popularity with the wine door wine region so, uh, at the United States, is to start to um, discover the Portuguese wines, and uh, the companies need to make um, uh, communication actions in the in the United States, uh, go to the um, the expositions, uh, make the the wine tastings, etc. Got it. Yeah, this is a uh, this is some good stuff. I really like it, and I actually totally appreciate you guys. Um, uh, sending me some of this stuff. Um, one of the things I find that's fascinating about wine, and, and it's not this is not like some revelation because everybody 
pretty much says yes. the same thing, is, you know, I can have a wine from your country, and I'm getting kind of a like a, a snapshot, a story, whereas, you know, I can drink a wine from Texas or a wine from California or a wine yes. from France. I mean, wine is one of those things, and I've talked about this with other people. It's just there's something, you know, completely different about wine, and, and even from year to year, uh, people that uh, yes. I encounter, I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's not like, I mean, I like great beer and I like really good beer, but beer pretty much stays the same from year to year. There's really there are no vintages um, yes. because they, they, they strive to keep the exact same flavor. But with, with wine, I mean, you've got those uh, differences and even within, you know, the next year's vintage will be, you know, or the 2008 will be different than 2007. And that's one of the great things about yes. wine. Yes, the, the, the great in the wine industry and the wine uh, taste is the, um, the um, results with the quality with the fruit is uh, revealed, uh, is the, um, exposed in the, in the bottle. And uh, we, can, we, can show the, we can show different wines from different blocks, from different regions. The, the wine consumer can can taste and can have a different experience experience depends with a wine region depends with the grapes so it's a it's not the same thing with a um, with a, um, the same wine uh, each vintage right so we right. it's always different and interesting <laughs> always always um, well I think um, like I told everybody if uh, if you see this out in the stores, I say to go ahead and get it. Um, if you're looking for a wine uh, with with this type of uh, uh, profile, if you're looking for something like like really fruity and fruit forward, you're probably not going to enjoy it. But just like if you like this style of wine and you don't like fruit forward wines, I wouldn't I wouldn't go for those either. So um, I happen to like these types of wines. Um, I like that I like that earthiness and that little bit of bitterness to it, um, the the dust and the and the rustic part of it um, because those those are wines that that uh, just are interesting and, and they have a lot of character to it and and make me really think about the wine rather than just go oh it just tastes really nice and sweet and not sweet but you know it's fruity yes. and it's just real easy you know mm -hmm. this is a wine that you know I could see you know taking time to drink rather than just you know oh it's just it's just a beverage type of wine so um, that's going to uh, do it for today's show um, my little phone is giving me little uh, notifications and stuff. Um, so that's going to do it for today's show, uh, everybody. Uh, I really appreciate you stopping in. Um, hope you enjoy this. We're going to have some more uh, Skype stuff coming up. Probably in a couple weeks I have a, um, uh, a live tasting via Twitter. And I should be getting some wines. Um, and I will also be doing a Ustream, which, um, which will be live streaming. So instead of just this, like we're doing here with Skype... Uh, anyone who wants to watch, I'll be doing it. I'll be doing the tasting live via Ustream. Then we'll make an episode out of that. Um, and uh, that's going to be it. We'll see everybody again on Monday. And uh, uh, Manuel, do you have any last things you want to say? And you know, I really appreciate you coming here. Okay, I appreciate the the Portuguese wines, mainly the Avelino wines from our company. So uh, I think that you um, that the the wine state consumers can can make a good choice if you choose the Portuguese wines and it's a really um, uh, different ex a new experience and uh, can can probably can drink a good values good values wines definitely. All right, and so everybody, that's going to do it for today. And uh, like I said, we'll see everybody again on Monday. And special thanks to you, Manuel, for uh, uh, getting together with me here on Skype. <laughs>